Hey folks, welcome back to My Kitten Reads. Um, and this is my August wrap up of what I read. I read eight things in August, which wasn't too bad, considering that in the first week at the very least, I um, pretty much read nothing that counts, um, just fan fiction, because I kind of had a reaction to having re read seven books in the last week of July. But yes, I did read um, eight things, and it was sort of, there was a bit of a reread going on, and there was some nonfiction finally being finished. Um, but, and there were some audiobooks. So the first thing I read, I don't have a copy of um, because it was an audiobook and it was actually an audiobook that I don't think I've read before. I knew I'd read all of the Miss Marple novels in my final year of university, um, but I hadn't read a lot of the short stories. And so I got a hold of the audiobook of Miss Marple's Final Cases by Agatha Christie. Um, but when I say I'm not sure, there was one story in particular that I'm definitely sure I've read before, but it could have been in a different collection um, because some of the other stories weren't exactly um, familiar either. So, um, yeah, so I read in basically in one day um, at work when I was having a very focused, busy day. Um, I read Miss Marple's Final Cases by Agatha Christie. I love the Miss Marple stories. I love the Miss Marple character. They're just fun cozy mysteries where um and it was a collection of short stories where you know miss marple had to figure out various things for various reasons um the next thing that i did was i did a bit of a reread over a weekend of these three books which are the first of the wraith um wraith squadron story arc in the x-wing series so they're actually books five six and seven of the x-wing series these are the first three that were written by aaron alston um, and they are, I'm missing a cover here, but Wraith Squadron, Iron Fist, and Solo Command. Um, so this is, the first four books of the series are where Gentiles and Rogue Squadron, his famous squadron, um, doing their various things. Um, and this, this tri triplet of books are, um, basically he's come back from a mission that he ran with Rex. Rogue Squadron and he's talking to Admiral Akbar and he's saying so ro the rogues keep getting missions where that need commandos as well as pilots but ro the rogues are designed to be mostly pilots so I want to start a new X-Wing Squadron which uh, is made up of the screw-ups and the people that are on their last chance and who all have skills for you know commando and intelligence missions they just happen to be X-Wing pilots as well so flipping it and going the other way around. And so he creates Red Squadron. And so we have a whole new cast of characters um, and they get involved in the hunt for Warlord Zinge. Um, and yeah, so I actually, these are my favourites of the X-Wing books. I mean, I love all of the X-Wing books, but the way Aaron Alston writes compared to the way Michael A. Stackpole, who's the other X-Wing author, writes is quite different. Michael A. Stackpole focuses on a specific one or two characters and it's very plotty, whereas this is plotty, but you know you know about all the characters. So, for example, there's a particular pilot I can think of in the Rogue books who is in four different books, and you never find out more than his species, his wingmate, and the fact that he has a death mark. And you find that out in, like, the first couple of chapters, and you never find out anything else about him. That's Ruv Shiel. Whereas there's one character that dies halfway through Wraith Squadron and you know her motivations and you know what kind of person she is and who her family is as well as her species and her skills um and it's really heartbreaking when it happens and that's halfway through the first book so yeah that's that's the uh three Wraith books so uh Wraith Squadron Iron Fist and Solo Command by uh Aaron Alston um I really enjoyed rereading those and it put me on a complete X-Wing Star Wars kick and I'm now listening to a podcast that's reading through them the X-Wing books so that's awesome um there may be some more X-Wing books in my rereading coming up particularly because there's the, the last one in the series which was written many years after the rest of them I haven't actually read and it's the rates again so I may actually get around to reading that who knows um anyway so yes that's those three books after that I went on a bit of a non-fiction kick and I finished a couple of non-fiction books the first one I finished was this one, which is A Brief History of the Tudor Age, and it is by Jasper Ridley. I have been reading this for three and a half years. It's very dry. Um, I think I rated it about 
a three star or put on on Goodreads, but I possibly would have given it maybe a two and a half. Um, I think it's a good basis for future reading for the Tudor age because the Tudor age is one of my favourite periods of history. And so this is quite dry and very much like a textbook. Um, but whatever I do remember from what I've read of this is going to inform my future reading of possibly more engaging stuff based around the Tudor age. So I think it was a well worthwhile read and I'm kind of horrified at some of the pastimes and entertainments and behaviour of the Tudor age, but I still love it anyway. So that's that, A Brief History of the Tudor Age by a Jesper Ridley. And then I finished off this, which is The Fictional Woman by Tara Moss. I read the first half of it uh, when I was at home with back problems uh, back last month, I think. Um, and then I just got distracted and then I picked it up again this month and I finished it. So this is Tara Moss. It's, it's not a biography, but it's also a treatise about feminism um, and in that she's using the stories of her life and what she's experienced to illustrate what she's saying about feminism in particular based around the idea of that there are all sorts of fictional women the types of stereotypes and and the types of women that society expects women to actually fit into and women don't necessarily so things like the mother and the crone and uh the wife um you know, um, the archetypal woman, the gold diggers and mean girls, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I found this really fascinating. I, I really liked it. I've not read a lot of feminist treatises. So to me, it was all kind of a bit, well, not new. A lot of it was stuff that I was aware of, but it was discussing it in a certain way that made it really interesting. Um, so yeah, I would really recommend uh, The Fictional Woman by Tara Moss. And I'm quite looking forward to maybe picking up some of her fiction at some stage. So yes, that was my other non-fiction book that I finished in August. Then I finished, finally finished another audiobook, which is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban by J.K. Rowling, continuing my Harry Potter reread. Um, this one, the audiobook I have is read by Stephen Fry. Um, I got a bit stuck in the middle of it because as it turns out, I've read so much fan fiction about intelligent, smart Harry that when you get to the middle of this book and he's ignoring Hermione mostly because of, you know, Ron and also creeping out of Hogsmeade, Hogwarts to go to Hogsmeade when it's dangerous and there's someone supposedly out to kill him. Yeah, I just got irritated. <laughs> um, I usually listen to books at regular speed, so like, you know, one on one speed. Um, and but I got so stuck in the middle of this that I ended up putting it to 1.5 just to get through it. Um, which is which is kind of weird, but yeah, it's just I suppose that kind of thing about Harry Potter irritates me more now as an adult than it ever did when I was first reading it. So, but still an enjoyable read, and I always loved you know the Quidditch games and the shenanigans that happen at Hogwarts. Um, so yeah, that's Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban by J.K. Rowling, read by Stephen Fry. And the final thing, the eighth thing that I read um, in the month of August was on my Kindle, and I finally finished off the novella, The Dream Quest of Velvet Bow by Kitch Johnson. Um, this was one of the ones that I started reading for the Hugo Awards and didn't quite finish, even though I was enjoying it. And then I just got, again, distracted by other things and never got around to finishing it. So now I have actually finished it. Um, it's a story about Velvet Bow. She lives in the dream world, I guess, where, you know, there's not really any rules um, and there are gods and, like, stuff disappears and stuff, weird stuff happens. And that's what she's used to. And she teaches at a university at the College for Women. Um, and one of her students disappears. She's gone back to the waking world with someone she's fallen in love with and this could ruin the College of Women. So Velvet Bow goes off on a quest to find um, this this student and bring her back. And it, you know, it goes as it goes on, it turns out there is more important about this student to the dream world um, than everybody thought. And so it's absolutely imperative that Velvet Bow finds her and gets her to come back. Um, and yeah, so it was fun. I kind of liked it. I get the feeling that of from what I've heard, it's kind of um, 
a lot of the creatures are kind of based on the whole um uh um yeah no i've forgotten the name but the whole cthulhu thing um which i'm not really big on and don't know much about but i still kind of enjoyed it as a sort of a quest of this middle-aged woman um you know settled in her life but going on a quest to do the right thing anyway no matter you know no matter what the consequences for her herself might be um yeah so i really enjoyed the dream quest of velvet bow by kish johnson and that was the eight things that i read in august so um yeah I also started quite a number of books that I've got a little way into, so I'm hoping I can read some of those in September. Um, there is, I do have another reading project in mind for later in September because I'm taking a week off work and I kind of maybe am thinking I might try my first Robin Hobb trilogy because I have one sitting on my TBR and I've been putting it off and putting it off because you know, I need to assign a chunk of time to it. Um, yeah, so I might do that this month. I'm also working on a project where I'm writing down all the series that I have that I am partway through and like writing little checklists of the books so that I know what I should be reading next. And because I have mostly met, met my goals um, for this year, I haven't met the number of books yet, although I'm well ahead of where I should be. But in terms of reading writers of colour, and reading books with uh, queer protagonists um, I am you know my goals weren't very large and I have surpassed those goals already so I am, might since I've done that aim for the rest of the year to I guess try and finish off or at least catch up on some of the series that I am part way through we'll see how that goes um, I will likely be back next week for a book haul and I will see you again really soon. Bye.